Good afternoon, everyone. It's Tom Sidney Bushnell, AKA Numbers, here from, well, from all of my channels, but that's another story. So I'm here from Sight Club, the Tom Numbers Show, and News with Tom Numbers. Um, people that watch my show will know we had a bit of a tricky issue with uh, one of the channels in the week, but we're still alive. So I've got a magnificent guest with me today, Leliana Dowding. How are you, Leliana? I'm good, thank you. I'm How, good. Are you? How are you? It's great to have you on the show. Yeah, I'm very good, thank you. It's great to have you on the show. Yeah. So I've been seeing your, your stuff from afar on Twitter and when I tune into GB News and, and I see that you're similar in terms of a lot of your outlook on stuff and you're standing up for truth. I mean, your background um, model um, on the Stein Report and on GB News and basically, you're, you know, it says on your Twitter, it's like you just, you're, you're letting it out what you feel about what's going on, about the shenanigans of, of, of the times we're in. Um, and I think it's interesting that there's a lot of people in the UK, similar to yourself, that were known in the public prior to all the nonsense. And now you guys and girls are standing up and you know speaking your truth, which I think is commendable and, and it's needed. And so, and then there's people like me that weren't really known before, but when the big stuff hit in 2020, we had to start saying stuff as well, and then it's grown from there. So it's interesting, it's fun that we're able to collaborate together at this point in time. So, um, so yeah, thanks for all you're doing. No, thank you. Thanks for having me on. And uh, no, it's interesting you say that because I think that's really important. I think, you know, I've lost a lot of friends the last few years, um, as have many people. And I think but it's been a great opportunity to possibly meet people from other walks of life we've never met you know, yeah, cross yeah, paths with cross and paths stuff with and, stuff, you know, and work together on work trying together to spread on, some kind of awareness to what's going on. Yeah. So what, what do you think about, well, we're going to some numbers. So new people to the show, um, when I, I, they gave me the nickname Tom Numbers, the kind of community tip, but when I talk about numbers, it's, it's a hidden language. It's, it's called gematria. It's a form of numerology. Um, and it's simply A is one because it's the first letter. B is two because it's the second letter, C is three because it's the third letter, all the way through to the 26th letter, Z or Z, 26. Um, and I've done your numbers for you, so I thought you might like this. So I'm, I'm good. So I'm, full disclosure, everybody that watches my show knows this. So I'm a big Trump supporter. I'm a big fan of President Trump and, and uh, the things he's doing in front of people, but also I believe he's doing some things in the background as well. I've met his daughter, Ivanka. I've met his son, Eric. So, um, I was going to ask you, what, like, where do you stand with Trump? Are you support you? Are you just kind of tolerant of that? How do you feel about him? You know what? There was a you know, time when I really did really support Trump. Trump. Um, um, when was it? I, I got a bit upset that he, he kind of sticks by the... That, that's kind of upset me about um, a little bit. That's kind of upset me about um, a little bit. Um, and then also a slight bit of division with DeSantis. But again, with DeSantis, it's like, you know, you look at his backers. Are they the big neocons? Um, you know, he went to Yale and Harvard. He's taking money from some questionable people. Um, um, there's a lot about Trump that I like. And, you know, the... America was doing really, really well when he was in charge. I mean, like everywhere else, it's just gone to absolute shit, hasn't it? The last few yeah. years. Um, but you know, the American economy was booming while he was while he was a leader. We didn't have war, and that's a huge thing for me as well. The fact that you know we didn't go into and and, and just like we all said, like if, if Hillary had got in, the, the war with Russia would have started sooner. Now Biden's in, he pulled the troops out of Afghanistan, boom, straight into Ukraine. So to me, it's huge that there was no huge big wars with when when Trump was le um, leader, and it would be great actually if he got in again and could, and could you know sort out the economy. He needs to actually drain the swamp this time round if he does get in. Um, but equally, if DeSantis got in, you know, I, I've liked what he's done the last the last three years um, as well. You know, he's really you know kept Florida open. Um, and, you know, he was very vocal and that. So, you know, we'll see. But, yeah, I'm definitely not a, a, anyone that dislikes Trump. And actually, funny little story. When I won Miss Great Britain in 98 and went to Miss Universe, I think it was... Was it in 98 when you won it? Yeah, and I think it was a long time ago. <laughs> And the more years have passed now than I was alive when I won it, and that's kind of scary. But he, it was actually his franchise. Yeah. What, what year were you born? What year were you born? Uh, 80. 80. 
okay, I'm 75. Yeah, so yeah, same thing. So 98, I was, yeah, I've been a lot, I've been alive longer since 98 than I was prior, yeah. yeah. I know, and, and it's it's really scary to kind of think that, but yeah, it was his franchise at the time. So I owe him really for having my green card and my citizenship. My citizenship. Ah, okay. So you're a US citizen as well? Yeah, as well, yeah. Yes. That's how I've been able to get in and out of America the last three years. People are like, how have you got into America? And I'm like, sorry, guys, I have a passport. There's no <laughs> no magic here. Yeah. It's interesting. So the reason I asked you about Trump is in terms of the numbers, and also it's really interesting you brought up DeSantis. So I was, when I, because I look at stuff from through the lens of, I hear what's going on and then I kind of see my own reality with synchronicities, uh, synchronicities and numbers and kind of download things that just kind of pop in and I'll examine it and I'll try and see around the corner of stuff and and I I have the skill with the numbers and anyone can learn it. It's just a little bit of practice, you know, and I'll look at stuff. And I remember when DeSantis kind of popped up early, from my perspective early in the corona thing and and I looked at his numbers. And I thought, he sounds like Trump and he seems similar to Trump and maybe kind of a a younger Trump or a baby Trump, and I'm like, okay. And then I did his numbers, and it came to 138, which comes to Donald Trump, which actually comes to your full name, so Leliana Dowding. I was like, okay, so that's why I bring it up. And I was like, but it's so interesting you said about Trump and then with with DeSantis. And um, it's been interesting how it plays out with, with, with the two of them, you know? I, I think I know where it will go. So wait, did you say you, they both have the, have the same numbers? They both have the same numbers, so, and wow, you do as well. So, yeah, so so yours is so so I'll pull yours up. So yours is uh here we go. So Leilani. Am I said am I Yeah yeah Lilani. that's it, that's it. Say your yeah. name to me, then I'll get it. Leilani. Leilani, Leilani. 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 <laughs> I might have been adding an extra eye in it. So Leilani. So Leilani is sixty two, which is Queen. Oh. Which is uh yeah, oh, yeah, you you know, you I are like missing. I'm, I'm yeah. into you, I'm into this now. <laughs> good, good. So, and that's the thing when you when you get it when you get it personalized, it becomes meaningful, you know. So, um, so 62, and I don't know if you're into Nikola Tesla, the inventor. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Okay, well, Nikola is 62 as well. Ah, ah. yeah, um, and Dowding, there's a bit of a connection with you and me on this. So, Dowding is 76. Um, Trump said, I guess we have a magic wand. He said that on some of his speeches. And a magic wand is 76. And my first name, Thomas, is also 76. Oh, um, oh. Yeah. And if you add them together, so Leilani Dowding is 138, which is Donald Trump, 138. Ron DeSantis, 138. Revaluation, 138. The gold reset, 138. So people in the communities and Kind of, they think about you know maybe there'll be a currency reset or we'll go back to a gold standard, um, but one thirty eight is is the gold reset as well or revaluation, yeah. So that's yeah. really interesting. I like it. Yeah. So there's there's some you know some parallels and it's funny because you start to see kind of round corners, you know. It's, yeah. yeah. I like yeah. it. Yeah. And then you'll get things in the cup in the papers, newspapers. So I quite often, I know this sounds kind of a stretch, but you're, you know, you're into, you're here, you're speaking up. So you have a certain level of consciousness and understanding and openness about you. Um, and things like the Daily Star, the, the Sun, the Mirror, even the Express and the Mail, the kind of tabloids, even the, the broadsheet sometimes, but the tabloids with the kind of strange headlines each day. I'm noticing that they're coding stuff in plain sight and if you know how to work out the code then you can kind of figure out a few things but sometimes they put my name in there like last on sunday on the back of the mirror they said um uh this is for you tom no for you tom and then then i opened the inner page and it said this is for you tom and it's a fairy tale ending and i'm all about the big picture of humanity let's get to a glorious ending and i just had my channel taken down two days before so yeah. i'm like all right okay boys Thanks for that. But they, it's like, why are they putting the name Tommy again? And I had, I had that about a month ago as well. Because usually I'm positive, but you know, we're all human and we have a Yeah, little, and it does you know, go, up and know, down. go up and down. Yeah, and about a month ago, I was probably like, I don't know, it's quite cloudy, it's sunny right now, but maybe a month ago in England, it was, there was a period where it was kind of raining, yes. a bit yes. cloudy. 
and people kind of felt energetically maybe just a bit kind of wonky and anyway on the front of the paper it said cheer up Tom I was like okay <laughs> all right and then you know it started, it started being sunny again but it also correlates with certain people I do shows with so I won't be surprised if you and me get a code in the papers in the next day or two and I'll find it and I'll show I'll it. Send it, it send it to me. Send it to me. Yeah, I will. Yeah, I will. Because that's the sort of thing that goes on. So this is a funny one. So I had a friend um, that came over the weekend to help me with my event. And we went down to Dirtle Door on the coast. And uh, anyway, we're just joking around and a bit of banter. And she just points to this hill. <laughs> it's like a big green hill near Dirtle Door, but there's like a kind of uh, tip on the top. And she said, oh, look, there's, there's a nipple. I was like, where? <laughs> the big green hill and there's a different and anyway so we started laughing about it and then i just i know alex reed and uh i was like oh well it made me think of katie, <laughs> katie Price with on both yeah. selector with the talking yeah. nipple anyway so i joked with with my friend about that because she's from obviously she didn't know who katie was anyway the next day with this newspaper it said about the fairy tale ending <laughs> and tom on the front of, the, of another paper, there's a picture of Katie Price at the top. And I was like, Katie's well known, but she's not always in the papers. I might no. bring her out every two no. or three months. And I just, I said, look, there's Katie Price. And she started laughing. She's like, no way, we were talking about it yesterday. So it's these sorts of things, the synchronicities happen. Happen a lot. Yeah, I've yeah. noticed that things that, I've always noticed synchronicities that happen with me. Have you? Okay. Yeah. yeah. But it doesn't surprise me, you, yeah, because of what, what you're speaking up about. What sort of things do you notice? What sort of things happen with you? Just the way things fall into place a lot of times as well. Not just, not, or I'll be talking about something or, or I'll be wondering about something. And sometimes I even say, I don't ever have to ask a question because if I think of the question, I'll literally get the answer within the next couple of days from something. It will be on the radio, it will be on the newspaper, it will be somewhere. Um, yeah. And so I can often now, you know, I might want to ask somebody a question, but instead I just think, oh, I'll just, I'll see if it appears, and the answer usually does. It's, it's weird. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the, you're in, you're in tune with it. You're getting it in your own life. That's what it is. Because it's so exciting. It's like you can go to other sources. You can ask, but the universe if, will tell you the truth if you're yeah. open to it. And know? I also think, I also think um, a lot of things uh, work-wise or to do with what I'm doing or the platforms I've been given have also been come in that way. It's nothing I've actually, nothing I've actually actively actually tried to pursue. pursue. They've kind of fallen into place, place, place by maybe something else that previously so for example i did the housewives of cheshire ha hated most of filming it thought god you know i didn't want it to be i didn't want it to be in this like materialistic show that's not why i joined i wanted to show people the alternative um kind of less materialistic way that a lot of you know people with maybe a wealthy partner live and it didn't happen so i got it, it it frustrated me and i got annoyed but then i think if i didn't get if i hadn't done that show i probably wouldn't have been invited onto like gareth's art uh, gareth ike's show at the time who then got yeah. me to do some stuff for iconic and then after doing stuff for iconic i got asked to do gb news and mark stein show so it all kind of happened in synchronicity without me actually actively going out and trying to pursue it amazing so you were in the flow and you just let it come in naturally organically yeah 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 and i Gareth's think great. i did a show with gareth just about a month ago brilliant yeah brilliant yeah 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 and it's funny because actually and the weirdest thing is probably what opened my eyes was reading his dad's book 20 years ago and the next thing yeah. i'm on the day for doing a show with gareth and i always think to myself you know, back in the days when I was modelling and more well known, and I thought, God, if if I was ever asked to do like Big Brother or something, who would I really find it fascinating to be in the house with? And I always thought David I. And the next yeah. thing, you know, I'm there, and I am having conversations with David and you know his sons and his girlfriend that I would never thought. You know, it was just kind of like, oh, this would be really fascinating to be able to chat to him about this, and then you know. Took a time, twenty years or so, but happened. Yeah. yeah, I know, and that's it's brilliant. It's like I've I did a show with uh, with with David in October. I was in America at the time, um, and then uh, we he was here and we did the show. We'd had it planned for a while, 
And we, the main theme of it was consciousness. We were talking about that consciousness, the synchronicities, and he gave a great discourse as he always does on, on that, those blended topics. It was really, you know, it was amazing, fascinating. Yeah. And um, talking of like things kind of happening later. So I knew Matt Letizia a little bit about 10, 12 years ago. I did, a, I did an interview with him, but I didn't expect 2020 and nor did he. And then it's like, oh, we're on the same page. We better, you know, and then we've been collaborating and doing shows. And it's yeah. amazing. It's like someone yeah. like Matt, it's like, you know, I knew him a little bit back then, saw him at one or two dinners since. And then, we, you know, we're in the same war, we're in the same battle, you know, we're, we're on the same bus, you know, so it's, Bus and war are the same numbers, actually, 42. I didn't do that intentionally, but <laughs> the, same, the same thing, you know. So, um, yeah. What do you think? Where do you think we're going? What, what's, your, what's your feelings on things right now in, in the UK? What do you feel is uh, where we're at and what do you see coming? And do you see any, what, what solutions do you see to this? So I, I, I see a lot. I see that there's been a huge awakening. People have realised a lot of things that I've been, you know, thinking about, talking about to close friends only since 20, you know, since early 2000s. So, you know, I was never really vocal about anything or, you know, not not just COVID, but synchronicities, 9-11, all of these yeah. kinds of things yeah. that happen, and loads of false flag events, loads of um, manufactured events, the shit that they put in our food, in our water, that we're breathing, all of these things, big pharma, banking, all of these things I've been thinking about since early 2000s. And now i feel like it's great i can you know i can talk about it more openly because people are getting it they're starting to see all the links unfortunately it still is very slow and i see a lot of people that are still going to be stuck in their old mindset that aren't prepared to you know the bbc readers the ones that love bbc verify they're going to be stuck in that old mindset they're not prepared to open their minds and move forward whereas the people I kind of see that have been vocal about things, even if they can't be vocal, say on Twitter, like I was able to be vocal publicly um, because I I didn't care if I well I, I didn't have anyone to to what do you call it to who rules over me like i don't have a boss I work for myself work, yeah, yeah. Right. i'm glad yeah. i don't have anyone to be accountable to. i'm shit <laughs> i forget what all i'm right, saying all right. all the way through. Yeah. i think i've fallen off my head my horse too many times and hit my head but um yeah i don't have anyone to be accountable to so um i'll say what i want and i found that in doing so i met like-minded people um who couldn't necessarily say things publicly but were talking to their friends like a lot of them and trying to open the minds of their family and friends back to position back to the room, back to <laughs> yeah so um yeah right so i'm not I, there's no one that i'm accountable to so i felt like i could i could speak out and by doing so i would then meet and attract like-minded people who were either also speaking out or maybe they weren't speaking up publicly but they were still trying to you know speak to their family their friends anybody they came in contact with people that were non you know non-compliant yeah weren't wearing the masks weren't following lockdown but weren't necessarily shouting it from the rooftops you know so so to me that was really important um i've lost track of <laughs> i've lost track of where i was going with this so um you, you mentioned before that like 9 11 and yeah. since 2020 you've 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 known something is not as it seems you know you've been talking to people privately and now we've got to this point. yeah so now i think all of the a lot of those people who who i'd spoken to who like you and i um have now opened and if they weren't previously open to it they've opened their minds to it and i see that there's been a shift like you know they're out trying to plant some seeds like physical seeds grow some of their own food they want to teach their kids more at home um they're more vocal about what schools are trying to induct their children with um so i'm seeing less like less materialism and more back to nature more back to basics and really the important things in life you know um, yeah. relationships not just with other people but relationships with nature food growing their own things getting away from yeah getting into nature that's big i moved down to the coast not long ago 
and it's amazing. I mean, I love London, but I'm over it now. It's like, no, I'm enjoying the coast. And Which coast? I go and visit and everything. Uh, down Bournemouth. So oh, just from on... Bournemouth. You know from Bournemouth, right? No, I didn't know that. I yeah, did. yeah, I was born there. Yeah. What part of Bournemouth? Uh, Charminster. Well, I was born in Southampton, moved to Charminster, and I actually have a flat on Richmond Hill still that I rent out. So, yeah. Okay. I, I'd have to, I don't know Richmond Hill, but okay. Brilliant. It's that big hill oh. as, you, as you come into Bournemouth. So it's just the other side of the big hill. Um, as you come okay. into the town centre, it's the big hill that you kind of walk down into the square. Ah, so do you get down here? Like, do you come down here with the family sometimes to still visit and check out the flat? Do you know what I haven't for ages because it's a long drive from Staffordshire, but I'm, I met my parents come up here. <laughs> okay, yeah. Oh, it's a great, well, you know how great it is. It's lovely, you know, seeing the sea and old Harry Rocks or the Isle of Wight. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, when you said you went to right. Durdle Door, I've yeah. done that walk many times from Corfe Castle and then Durdle Door yeah. and then um, also the New Forest. You've got to go to the New Forest. Yeah. It's amazing and magical. magical. It is. I need to, the forest, I've been through it a bit, but I know that I need to get in there more. I need to get myself a motor, because in London, I sold it ages ago. I didn't need one, but I kind of yeah. miss what now I need to get yeah. one. So I'm on. The, I'm in the process of getting one, and then I'll be able to go gallivanting. And they <laughs> yeah. like, quite fun here, and they're like little topless buskers. And yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah. It's great. It's, you know, it's amazing. So, but you were talking about, so you were talking about um, nine, and that, and I knew back then it wasn't, it was not, mm. you know, it wasn't what mm. they told us. But there's something interesting in the numbers with that. Um, so if you do the numbers on Tower 1, it comes to 115. And if you do Tower 2, it comes to 139. And if you add those two numbers together, so Tower 1 plus Tower 2, so 115 plus 139, it comes to 254. And guess what day of the year is? The 254th day of the year, guess what day it is? Is it really September? Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So they planned this stuff for a long time. They know. So the bad side have known about the numbers, but intrinsically, I believe all the numbers. You know, they're good. They're numbers, letters, language. They're all good. But then things got infiltrated. We, whatever this is here on the earth, where we've come down and incarnated into this, this matrix, this, this life that people, you know, they they they're born, they die. We have joy. We have pain we have disease we have happiness all these contrasts whatever this is somehow i think intrinsically at the end of it it's 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 a positive good thing but when you get the dark and the light you get that yeah. you get that yeah. 3d split the matrix so i think the bad ones have used it in fact i know they have but now like you talked about the awakening people are waking up now we're taking them back including things like numbers synchronicities symbols all of those things and so I guess I feel part of my call, my mission is just is to help point those positive things out and give people mm. hope with it. So, because yeah, that's the thing people. as well, because I think for people that know what's going on, there's always, you can always kind of plan for it or you can slightly stay ahead of the game. If you know yeah. what, you know, if you know what's coming, you can, you can make sure you're ahead of what's happening. But if you're asleep in it, you're never going, you're never going, that's why I never wanted to work for somebody. I always wanted to work for myself because I was always scared of being accountable to somebody. Um, you know, when I, when lockdowns happened, I wanted to move to a place where I could keep my horses in case we ever locked down again. And who knows, and this WHO treaty goes through, which I hope enough people are going to be, you know, wake enough people up to stop it happening. If this goes through, who knows what could happen again with lockdowns, 15 minute cities, climate change lockdowns all of this so if you're aware of it you can kind of try and make these steps but i'm fear for the people that aren't because it's almost like they're on a suicide mission really because i just you know if they're you know from from every single angle if they're letting their kids mutilate themselves transitioning or something then you know that's the end of the bloodlines there if, if they're Going for their eighth jab, ninth jab, tenth jab, what's going to happen? You don't know what's going to happen to the facility. So I think that I think that by being aware and awake of what what's going on, you can you can kind of 
it can be a it can be a positive thing to help you you know prepare and, and help others around you prepare and build that community yeah yeah it's interesting when you said the game so game is 26 which is also god and it's also card and when I was talking about the, the, you know whatever this is a matrix or a simulation whatever we're in you like the game you know if you know the game if you know god 26 game 26 even card you know then you can it can help predict or, or at least help help you prepare for possible scenarios possible outcomes you know um and uh yeah yeah what do you think in terms of because you've got the you you can see it synchronicities consciousness what do you what are your thoughts on what the nature of life and reality is what do you feel it is for you it's really hard um is i i'm one of those people that um, i'm happy to change my mind at different times based on new information so sometimes people say you know <laughs> i just like a switch one minute i think this one minute i think that but i've always thought i've always thought there is something higher but i don't know what that is is it god is it an alien is it spirituality is it a consciousness and then the more that I see us humans getting involved with AI, the more I start thinking, well, has there been AI around 10,000 years ago, 20,000 years ago, 100,000 years ago that created this kind of stuff? And then it becomes very matrixy, like like the movie, where it's like, what are we? Are we just you know energy producers or something and then a lot of me thinks are we even from originally from earth because we seem to be the only thing on the earth that can't live in tune with it we everything we do whether it's even if it's just picking up a bottle of water we've managed to destroy the planet in some kind of way by using that plastic or or whatever yeah. it is transporting it we can't live in harmony with the earth like any other creature can that's a really good point that's true yeah we do we fuck it up don't we Every, everything we do like and i'm not don't get me wrong i'm not one of those just doilies or anything like that um but i'm just saying that like when you look at you know anything i've just been watching the birds in my garden build their nests and when the nests when the nests go and they go it will just decompose and it will be nothing and you know yeah. not like us and our rubbish dumps and our plastic and fill in the oceans and stuff. yeah you're right that's, i mean that's really that's it we are we're the ones that screw it up and the thing is that if we do things well we can do it really well really well but when, well. But, but when we let go of the other side of like not kind of completing that like that na that natural nature cycle we could have maybe you know and then and then forgetting the rest sweep it under the carpet and that's the bit that we lack that's the bit we're mostly we use it for fall back on yeah. yeah and it's an interesting as well because you know we think to ourselves that we're so advanced versus like i don't know a little tribe in africa or in the middle of the amazon say but those people in the amazon who we think are so backwards are just living perfectly and happily off the, I bet they don't have like depression and anxiety, you know, they're just going out, um, foraging or hunting for their food, living with their environment, not destroying it. So it's like who is backwards and who is forward. So it's it gets really complex and I just have loads of deep thoughts about it. And then my mind's always constantly changing, like, you know, what is it? Where are what what are we doing here? Like what is our purpose? What's uh you know should we should we be trying to integrate with ai and all of that or if, if these advances have come what's already being used that we don't know about what's been here and been used like in the few last few thousand years what do you think about the thing of say this is so you bring that up ai and stuff we don't know about any thoughts on on uh clones or you know doubles of people and masks and all that sort of stuff any any thoughts on that yes but sometimes i really think that as well there's like non-player characters in this yeah, <laughs> like npcs like it was it started off as a bit of a joke and i'm like no really are they like just programmed yeah. things but i i mean if they're cloning the thing is if they're cloning sheep 
and they have cloned sheep and they can clone animals, then I totally believe they've cloned humans, a million percent. Why would they not have? There, there will be some sick, twisted people in a lab, secret lab somewhere that are doing things that, you know, humanity would be disgusted with, probably interbreeding humans and other species, um, yeah. Oh, yeah. you know, yeah. programming people. I, I mean, I was watching Joe Rogan and this lady was saying they put chips into pigeons and flown them around labs and they put chips into my, uh, rats' brains and, you know, controlled them through mazes. Who's to say they haven't done that to people? And why? how would we ever know if they really had? They'd never tell us the truth because people would be so disgusted by it. They would never tell us. So, you know, in these labs deep underground, who knows what's going on? Yeah, yeah the dumbs. I remember when I first learned about that within like the first week or two of lockdown, because I knew I was like, right, this is too much of this is the biggest thing that's ever happened in all our lives. This is too much of an opportunity for a bad side to do something, but it's also too much of an opportunity for if you believe in a good alternative for them to do something as well. And I was like, okay, they're keeping us off the streets. What's going on? There's something else going on that we're not known known about. And then I remember being told that someone told me, um, he said, Do you know about the kids? I was like, What? And he said there'd been all these thousands and thousands of kids rescued from these tunnels. I was like, and I, within a nanosecond, I didn't, I just knew that was the, correct. And then I was going online and seeing other people talking about it. I think Jenna Jameson was talking about it, some of the rescue stuff over in New York with the Mercy ship. And I was like, oh, what, you know, that's horrendous. But it, it clicked instantly. And I watched the fall of the cabal and they took you through that whole process of it. And dumbs, I didn't know what they were. We'd just seen them on TV and, and, you know films and stuff but it was like they're actually doing weird shit to people under the ground you know in the darkness where no one would know what was going on and that's horrific and it's like fuck and i remember when a little later after that when he'd already been doing it but when trump and ivanka were talking about ending was like prostitution and sweatshop workers that's i i thought that was the level i didn't realize the depravity of what was actually going on you know Shipping and this is what I mean, it's shocking to me that people rest, think, I had no idea, you know. And it, it's surprising to me that people think it's such a conspiracy theory that they do, but I think it comes down to cognitive dissonance where they don't want to believe the depravity of what is actually going on on this planet. And we know like children are being sold into all kinds of sorts of slavery, and, and then it's almost like it's kind of accepted that it's happening in asia and africa but of course if it's happening there it's happening here um and and you know we we hear we're hearing little snippets of things like you know like the, the you know the rape gangs happening in like rotherham and all of that but but it's just such a minor piece of detail about like, about, like the bigger picture of what's actually, actually what's actually happening with yeah. Yeah. yeah there's there's so much and there's so much more and the level of you know executive orders and he's like it's the scourge of the earth it's been going on for thousands of years i'm like shit man. i thought human and then, you know you see the these startups in, in San Francisco wanting to try and experiment with using young uh, face masks and facials and stuff. And that's been on mainstream. And then you'll see newspaper articles of startups in, in, in Silicon Valley testing out, you know, young blood to see what that does to people. So it's all it's all there when you look for it, but then that's, like as you said, the tip of the iceberg of what's, you know, really going on, because they're just letting out those snippets of information. They are. It's like, and, well, and you said as well about the, um, the, the well, the, uh, there's two parts. The first, but when you're talking about the um, clones, just a couple of things came to mind. So when early lockdown, Boris and Matt Hancock and others were all like tested positive, then it went from coronavirus to... And then, you know, it's not like a huge jump when you start reading about... Um, and uh, anyway, Boris, I've got a theory. I think Boris was swapped out early on and uh, and people that actually were his ex-lovers she, so there's people that talk behind the scenes about that as well saying he's not you know not the real boris and not the real man so if we go down the clone theory the papers were telling us if you take that perspective they were always putting out bo uh, 
Bojo and Bozo the Clown, Hancock and, and Boris. And if you spell the word clown in English, C-L-O-W-N, phonetically, you could say it as clone because own, O-W-N, put C-L in front, C-L-O-W-N is clone, clown. And it's like, okay, is that what, is that what they've been doing? Perhaps, you know. Um, and then when you talk about, and they, but they do, they have to tell you. They do it and yeah. people, and then yeah. the cognitive dissonance gets in there. Like, you see it, you see it, they scare people. And then they're like, no, it can't be that. And they just switch off. And it's, it's worse than not knowing it in the first place because they've, they've insulated it, you know. Yeah. They don't want to go there. Yeah. But, they, but then the ones that do it get away with it. They're like, well, it's not on us. We've told you. We did it as a joke, but we told you, you know. So it's, it is. It's the level of depravity that's been going on. It's horrific. I have one that believes that it's getting cleaned up. And now it's coming to the surface and we're getting told what sort of stuff's been going on because it's just diabolical, you know? And I do th I do think we are going to go in a circle well, it will, because I think there's always been cycles within humans on this planet. And I think that it does get bad and then it does get cleaned up. And it might take something catastrophic to make it get cleaned up, but it will get cleaned up. I truly do believe that. So do I. Yeah, I do. I do as well. I wanted to talk as well about the elephant in the room in terms of the UK right now. So people that you can't get away from it now. And I'm not one. I use the newspapers to coach, but I don't watch, you know, I don't tune into the TV all the time, the BBC, or, you know, um, ITV. So you've got the whole thing with Philip Schofield going on right now. Yeah. And I've done some yeah. interesting numbers on this. And I wanted to see what your, your thoughts were about it. Um, but uh, here, here it is. It's on this one. So if you spell the word, the two words, Philip Schofield, it comes to 163. 163, if you spell out the, the word uh, 23, comes to the same value. So Philip Schofield equals 163. 23 also comes to 163. Now, 23 is an important number on both sides of the equation. A lot of the bad dark cats have used it. A lot of good, good ones with I am, with God, etc. But a lot of sports stars would wear 23. But the interesting thing is we're in the year of 2023 right now. Now, there's a few guys that I do shows with. Um, one is a guy called 107. He's like a cowboy character. I've met him a few times in person, but he'll quite, he's quite often known for sitting in the, at the camera but not showing his face. He's got this early voice and he'll have the cowboy boots and everyone knows it's one. He, he did a broadcast on my, my uh, live event, the Tom Number Show yesterday in Bournemouth. Anyway, so he's always talked about world events that, well, things that change the world are always done on a 23 and we're in the year of 2023. I've got another friend called Derek Johnson, who's an ex military guy, ex military man. He's going through all these executive orders that Trump put in place, but also ones prior to that. So other administrations, even the ones that Biden has extended and he, he dissects all the military orders. He's brought up this thing about there's going to be military tribunals in 2023. And he said that the, uh, New York Post actually uh, did an article about this about a couple of years ago. So we're in the 2023. So it was interesting to see that Philip Schofield was 2023. Then I, I had to kind of search a bit and find out who this young lover of Philip Schofield is or was. Um, and his name, hang on, let me pull it up. His name is Matthew, interesting that it comes to 188, which actually comes to close encounters. You mentioned about Aiden's. Probably down here in Bournemouth, you've probably seen, I don't know if you've seen ships and stuff, but it looked like there was a couple out last night. Um, Matthew 8, 8. Um, It also comes to uh, close encounter. I mentioned that. It comes to Jesus of Nazareth in a kind of biblical sense. You know, we might need something, whether people are Christian, Muslim, no faith at all, something probably needs to happen to change the earth. Also comes to show me the money um, and President Kennedy. But 188, I was like, so what is the virus? What is the true virus that's been on the earth? What is that scourge that's been on the earth? And it's probably, I think, it's, it's human That's the real virus. Mm -hmm. That's the real virus. So when the, when the coronavirus descended upon the earth, I thought there was a lot of digital codes with it that they were telling us it's a number of things. It's biblical. It's life-changing. It's a big scare event. Um, but it's something massive, like you've alluded to, that to go through these cycles to stop what's been going on, we're going to need something really huge and amazing that will just change it and revert things back to, to goodness, which I believe will happen as well. 
But I was curious that the, the two characters, 23 with Philip Schofield and Matthew 188, comes to the coronavirus. But then you add them together, and this is where it kind of goes even more. If you were to add up all the numbers in the alphabet, so A is 1, B is 2, C is 3, all the way through to Z, 26, God, card, game, they come to a figure of 300, 188 comes to the coronavirus. But then you add them together, and this is where it kind of goes even more. If you were to add up all the numbers in the alphabet, so A is 1, B is 2, C is 3, all the way through to Z, 26, God, card, game, they come to a figure of 351. And 351 comes to a number of things, but it comes to God communicates through numbers. You could even say God communicates through synchronicities, you know, happens like all those things. Um, but 351, God communicates through numbers. Um, Jesus Christ is the English alphabet. There's about 20 phrases, I have to pull them up and show you, but there's about 20 similar phrases that point to the fact that there's a, there seems to be a correlation that the consciousness of whatever this is in one way communicates to us, the observers, through numbers. And when I saw that with Philip Schofield plus Matthew McGreedy, McGreedy, have I said it right? It comes to 351, I was like, okay, so what's the bigger message? What is this? Because I think, I think there's gonna be a narrative that's gonna get let out and the, the, people, the, the big masses of the people, the public, they're gonna be woken up bit by bit by bit about this. They're laying the, the trap for a big reveal. And then I think there's gonna, I think a storm's gonna, I think there's gonna be, I think this is not going to go away. I think this is going to be a, a trigger point where there's going to be a lot of heartache about it, but I also think there will be a remedy where people will really awake because, bless her, my sister, she was here at the beach with me at the weekend, uh, Friday, and I'll talk to her about numbers because she's kind of, oh, you're not really a thing, you know. But then I said, well, what about this? She's like, yeah, what is this? What is it? And I told her. I was like, what is it? And she was like horrified. And now she's seeing bits in the paper, they're dropping it every day. There's a bit more, a bit more, a bit more. And it's just going to get worse. Um, that's what I feel about it, anyway. Well, it's weird because I think when he first came out, I was like, well, he's come out for a reason. And it's not because yes. he's just decided to. So everybody kind of behind the scenes was saying, oh, no, it's because he's being forced to, because they, you know, they've got some information on him. And he doesn't want it coming out. So he's saying this because he's been cheating with this young guy. So I thought it was already old information. I thought people already knew. But I guess that's because I don't get my news from, if I'm only reading, you know, what's yeah. on ITV or BBC, then I suppose you think he's just coming out. And I'm like, Brave? How is he not so brave? He's been caught cheating on his wife. How is that brave? The guy, that's not brave. That's not brave. But then I think I wasn't meant to, or general public were not meant to know that he'd come out because he was cheating. You've been cheating. it at least two years ago, didn't you? Yeah, I knew at the time. I was like, there's no, he's not just coming out just to come out. He's, and, and yeah. that's why I couldn't understand why is everyone saying how brave he is? He's like, he's just cheated on his poor wife. But I think, that, yeah, we weren't even meant to know who he cheated. I think we were meant to all be stupid and think he's just leaving his wife or something because he's just yeah. suddenly decided to come out with this and he's not done anything bad and he's not, um, pursued any of his thoughts or, or whatever so so now that it's actually come out the last few days that he did have the affair with the young kid who apparently wasn't young at the time but he'd met as a 10 year old or a, you know yeah. and started speaking to as a 15 year old when he you know the kid joined the theatre company at the age of 10 I think when when this came out, I'm like, this is just so weird that, like, how was anyone at trusting the media if the media have managed to do such a good job keeping this silent from the majority of people? Because all my friends and I were like, huh? I had friends texting me like, oh, you called this two years, you know, a couple of years ago. And I'm like, but didn't you figure that out in the last two years? And you're only just realizing now because it's the newspapers telling you. And if that's the case, how? Could you possibly you trust, possibly trust the mainstream media anymore as your primary news source when you're getting the information that I got, you know, two years late? Yeah, exactly. And I don't know if that's going to help wake people up to say, look, you can't, you cannot, you cannot trust them. Yeah, you hope so. I think it will, open, it will wake up another percentage 
but I think it's I think the big part I think the stuff that you and me understand that has to I think it has to be plastered all over the mainstream everywhere consistently because they did it with COVID they gave us what they gave us a 10-week warning didn't they you heard the rumbles of oh there's this through hand like mm -hmm. and then it was like you get to the beginning of March you're like fuck they're going to do this and I knew it was bullshit I spoke to a friend of mine that as an ambassador and he was like well and he always he always pulls this one out. He says, "Well, there's no one that's." I always say, "Look, there's a, there is a nefarious force." And he always just says, "Well, maybe no one's in control. Maybe they're all just." And he kind of, you know, I was like, "No." You, and he did that to me a few years prior, anyway. So, this me and my me and him and another friend that we grew up with, and we're in Regent's Park and we're talking about. It. I was like, "They're gonna fucking do this." I know it's bullshit, but I've got to physically get my house in order, and so I have to go to the shops, get all the cans and all you know all that mm -hmm. stuff because we just didn't know what was going to happen. So they were able to put the world into lockdown simultaneously all around yeah. like that. They can do the same thing, I believe, in terms of a reveal on what has been going on for hundreds and thousands of years throughout history, the bad, bad stuff. And uh, I think that's what will re reunite them. I don't know if you have come across Q or the Q post. Are you familiar with Q? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 The so only Q problem with... Oh, go on. Go on. You say first. No, no, go on. I was just, just going to say Q is the 17th letter. So... You get a lot of codes with 17 and Q, but yeah, please, yeah. So I followed Q a bit, and then they always said, trust the plan, trust the plan. But the problem with me is that by trusting the plan, I think what it did is it stopped a lot of people, but it, it like deactivated a lot of people from taking, yeah, stopped them taking any action because they were like, it's okay, something yeah. else is going to save us instead of saying, well, we've got to get together and we've got to push and we've got to make sure this doesn't happen. So the whole, I think, I think, you know, maybe people trusted the plan so much, maybe they didn't go out and vote because they were like, oh, it's okay, it's going to be fine, Trump's going to get in because we've got to just trust the plan, it's going to happen, yeah. or we don't need to kick up a fuss about the voting and how shady it was, it was. because, yeah. you know, there's a plan in place, but yeah. it, 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 like, stopped a lot of people from taking the action that's the only thing i'd say about i'd say about that but you know if, if people were into it, i'm like yeah, okay yeah, like, i think that's a fair you, point i think yeah i think there's a fair point with that that it did but i think anybody i mean i saw somebody wearing a big q t-shirt one day in like the most random place i'd never expect it and i actually got talking to the guy because i thought okay if he if he's wearing that then he must be aware of some of the darker side of what's going on and you know then you can bring some light into it you know and, and that's the thing i do think a lot of these things can be exposed but there will be people that do not want to believe it and i think that that will be their own detriment if they don't and see what's happening and and you know when people say oh there's no nefarious force like you said for the whole world to go into lockdown or at least the western world to go into lockdown and try at the same time and the same the same kind of rules and regulations be pushed on a global scale that says to me that these governments our governments are not acting independently um and you know, there's been a lot of talk, obviously, about the the WHO pandemic treaty. But I feel like that's kind of already in place. So whether we sign off for it or not, they managed to kind of do what they wanted anyway. The last three years, we've had the CDC, the FDA, um, all these the whole acronym club of people I call them because they're all like you know they're all the the yeah, acronym club. <laughs> They've been the one that have been like the main influence on what's going on around the world. It hasn't been our bloody, you know, elected governments, even though Richie Sunak was never even elected by us. So, you know, that's another thing as well. So, how are these people are being put in? Um, and they're being positioned into these these positions of power really they're being placed into the positions of power yeah oh yeah they're pieces aren't they i love that the acronym club i'm gonna i'll do the numbers on that i'll let you know yeah, that's them <laughs> now because there's like what is it wef who the three letter acronym club and they seem to be you know it needs to be wtf the what the fuck yeah the wtf yeah. Yeah, the, 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 the WE, yeah. Yeah, the acronym club. That's brilliant. That's good. That's gold. That's comedy gold. Um, 
Yeah. So and what? So I, I was talking to uh, Ricky Lambert. I did a show with Ricky at ex Liverpool and Southampton and, and uh, uh, England player. And um, so he he's aware of all this stuff, like you said, all the acronym club. He knows all that stuff. And he's like, Tom, if it goes through, we're fucked, you know. But he's also got this, and he's a beautiful soul, Ricky. He's got, he's you know, he's brave, he's correct, he's got, but he also gets a lot of this stuff. He, he's the one that, I knew this already, but he kind of came out of the thing that I would say on my shows. He's like, Tom, I've known for ages that frequency is the key to everything. I'm like, yeah. but yeah, that's yeah. like profound, you know, and he knew it. And we'll talk about all kinds of stuff. And then he'll be like, oh, I feel good, you know, I'm very to go, because he knows the orders that they put, the things that they put in place. And we were saying, well, if we all, all it would take is all of us, everyone to say no, just, yeah. just say yeah. no, like Zamo, you know, Grange just say no. And then it would end, it would stop. But the problem is, is people still too much of a large percentage of people don't want to know as long as they're not personally affected, even though their lives were affected through COVID and mm -hmm. the inconvenience of that for so long. If it didn't hit them right on their doorstep, they just kind of meandered and got through it and just carried on, you know. But if everybody got to the point and just said no, then it would be over yesterday. And that's exactly. what we need. Exactly. You know? And that's, that is what we need. And that's what's going to happen. It's those people that sit in the middle that know it's not right, but kind of go along with it and acquiesce just for to make things easy. They know, they know that the government are full of shit. They know that these things are lies but they'll just go oh you know what i want my life to be easy so i'll just i'll just go along with it when you got to really like you know stand up and say no i'm i'm not doing it i'm not i'm just not i'm not gonna do it and like you said it's frequency the government want us confused want us depressed want us anxious it's a low frequency to be on and it serves because then they can just show you know, some more pills up you know into people it is beneficial <laughs> It's yeah. beneficial when people are confused and, you know, so they, keep, they even overwhelm us with all this, you know, terrible stuff. They want us kept down in a really low vibration and they don't want us to be positive and see like the positive things that can happen. And I think that's like a lot of difference that I see in a lot of my close friends now who are trying to take positive action. Um, and and know about frequencies and things because you can get sucked into it and just keep you know keep yourself on a low level saying oh my god like you know the whole world's gone crazy everything's mental like how are we going to get out what are we going to do or then and then there's people that are like you know what I see what they're trying to do they're trying to confuse us they're trying to get us depressed they're trying to get us anxious you're trying to fill us with pills and i say if you're not if you haven't felt anxiety or sadness or some kind of depression over what they have tried to do to us then you're probably psychopathic because if you don't haven't felt any of that um then you're probably as crazy as as, as them that are doing this to us because it's a natural reaction to what they, they've done but the way to get yourself out of it is not then go to the doctors and say fill me up with pills because you know the government is to say right this is what they've done this is why i'm feeling this way of course i'm going to be anxious with all these possible rules but what can i do to find a solution um what can i do so my kids don't get indoctrinated by all these like radical ideologies all this filth that they want to teach in school like what can i do and that's the way you have to you know get out of that trap and, and you know it will, a, it will make you happier it will make every around you happier and that you get a more positive vibration and you know if everyone felt everyone like you know what we can, like, fight no, this, we can fight this and more people would fight it and more people would attempt to fight it but fight they would it. rely on us saying oh no we're never going to be able to beat them but there's just such a few of them we just got to say we're not doing it yeah we're not playing your, your games yeah that's it we're just and you the frequency getting together so that's Actually, I'll, well, we could talk off camera, but I'll ask you. So I'm thinking of doing, I did my first event yesterday, but I feel we need to go bigger and better and, and get real powerhouses together, which gives the public the permission to feel that actually, you know, we're in part of a real strong yeah. movement. Yeah. And then we we'll stand up. So I'm working on something, but I'd love to have you on board if, if you're up for it. So do, have you done public gigs and speeches and, well, not speeches, but like kind of appearances, interviews, 
Yeah, I mean, I used to go down to all the lockdown protests again, and whether okay, or not, yeah. Yeah, yeah, whether or not people said they made a difference or not, I don't know. But I know that when I left that, I was absolutely buzzing because I knew that what I was thinking, there were hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people who felt the same way and were prepared to march, and it just, it just, it just gave me hope that you know things that, that if there's enough of us that things things can be better and um uh yeah but as far as i'm really bad public speak i get no i forget <laughs> like i said i, I really that. think Sorry, I, 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 too many times i hit my head because sometimes i'm like i stand there and i freeze and i forget what i'm saying or or what have you i use the wrong phraseology it'd be more like um so what we did yesterday was like guests i've had from the show yeah. And we just sit down yeah. and have the kind of live show in front of people. So it's just conversation, you know. But it's, it's, um, so yeah, I won't put you on a podium where you've got <laughs> to get words. Um, but, uh, I think it is vital that people like you, people like, um, David Light, people like Matt Letitia, Ricky Lambert, a whole host of them that people know and recognize. It's, it's really just a measure. It's, you can't really measure how powerful that is because it's giving people, permission and people like familiarity yeah we're gonna yeah. i think we have to go through quantum leaps and quantum jumps to get out of this but people like comfort and so if they're familiar with a name familiar with a face they can latch onto that and then it gives them permission to tell you know or, mm -hmm. or share it with others and the thing is the frequency the frequency even if they're not aware of it if their frequency is raising which it will be by being associated with the good stuff that's just going to ripple and yeah. it's going to ripple yeah. into other people's lives. It's the ripple effect, you know, the frequency is the ripple effect. Definitely. I think, um, Domin I don't know if you know, Dominique Samuels, uh, she's a political commentator. She's taken yeah, a little break, I think. On, she's, she's really, TV, yeah. And she's yeah. really into that. And she's just trying to say to people, look, let's got to try and focus on the positive things you want instead of all the things you hate you've got to start talking about what you want and how to bring that about because if you keep we can all sit and keep talking about what we hate about what's now but if we can't say this is what we want then we can't bring any of that into fruition yeah it's manifestation it's manifesting, huge believer yeah. in manifestation huge yeah same here that's interesting that Dominique's into that. Yeah, but we should, yeah, love to. Massively, you know, massively. Do, do massively. A shop, yeah, talk with her, because that's it, we have to. Yeah, focus on what you want. I, uh, I've i got a friend I used to do, um, like, self-belief, um, mental confidence stuff with a golf in Wentworth. And uh, he always remembers the phrase, Roy, and he's like, I, and it, it wasn't even my phrase, it's someone else's, but it was simply where energy flows, sorry, where attention goes, energy flows. And this world is is a world of energy. And if yeah. you yeah. put positive energy out, um, then then it magnifies and comes back, you know. And it's really, really true as well. Like a lot of a lot of things I could only ever dreamed of have happened to me. And like, and then another thing that people get as well is like I've had it, if I've had like um it's almost like like, almost guilt that so I've been, you know, I've been so lucky because then people are like, "God, you're so lucky," and I'm like, "I really am so lucky." Like, how did how did this happen? And it's like, it's it's kind of lucky, everything I've dreamed about, I've tried to like follow it through, and then there's almost like a guilt involved with it, and then you can see. Um, um, you can see there's certain things where people are being programmed not to be able to like elevate anything. So I remember I was doing a reality show in Florida with a girl, and I was like, "Look, where my watch?" So something so stupid. She goes, "No, I can't put that on. Like, what if I break it?" I said, "If you break it, you won't. First of all, you're not going to break it." <laughs> Guys, out of time, I'm going to shut up. <laughs> no, no, sorry, it's just no. It's when you said wear my watch. I was wearing this cold laser wristwatch, oh, and I just you said oh. watch. So I just put it out. It's, it just cleans your blood. No, please continue. Amazing. Just, you Amazing. made me think. Yeah. Yeah, no, I said to this girl, where am I? She goes, no, I might break it. I said, you're not going to break it. How can you break it? I said, I want it forever. I, I go horse riding it. I do everything. You're not going to break it. No, 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 because I've never been able to afford something like that. And then I'm like, no, you can't say that. 
when you say that, you say that, that, that becomes, that, that, you know, so your reality, you must never you say, I'll, I'll never be able to afford, afford this, this, or I'll never, and it's not as a materialistic you thing, you know, I'm not there buying, like, you know, designer shoes and handbags and throwing money away being stupid, but I think, you know, but want something like, I dreamed of a horse that I always wanted, I was able, you know, to have her, I'd have to say, even I drive the shit car half the time, but, you know, it's, it's it's having the mindset to be able to think you know one day i will be able to you know get get this or have the security or not have this worry or that worry so and people are kind of programmed to feel that's a bad thing that's a bad thing 100% i think as well you're saying about manifesting we we're, we're manifesting all the time so if you're going to manifest, why not manifest something magnificent, something yeah. glorious, something yeah. that you want and you dream of, and instead of the other stuff. And it just, I've, I've kind of known that, but just when listening to what you were saying, I was like, we're manifesting all the time. So why not think big? Why not manifest big? Why not manifest glorious and happiness? And instead of the other stuff. And that's why they trick us. If you're watching, like, okay, EastEnders, I don't think I've ever watched a full episode. I mean, I know friends and family that love it. And you might, but it might just be a go-to that people go. But for me, I'm like, I don't want to know that. I don't. I don't want to be in all those silly arguments. All, all you know, unhappy. Yeah, like, and I always yeah. found it really depressing. depressing. Yeah, it is. It's depressing. It's like I'd much rather, you know, when I was younger, I'd watch Home and Away because it was by the beach. It's like at least the sun's shining. I don't really, you know, the story, but just yeah. it's sunny. It's like yeah. I'd rather watch that than dreary grey arguments. You know, I'm and with it's, you. it's depressing. I'm with you. Yeah, it's depressing, and so it's like. We're ma and that manifests. But I even yes. start to see people yes. kind of c copy those those silly character arcs and narratives in those sorts of soaps. It's like they kind of live it. And it's like no, yeah. you know, this, yeah. you're manifesting. They're be they're powerful beyond belief. Everybody, they're humans. So why not manifest something magnificent instead of something crap? You know. And that's why I think when people watch, you know, a lot of these. Um, you know, you've seen like Mizzy, like the prankster, the prankster. and uh, I don't know if you've seen yeah, that. And then, you know, just doing really just doing bad, really negative bad. things. But then it kind What's of built up. The Mizzy, the he was a, he's that? a prankster. He, uh, he, yeah. he's like basically an idiot. He's a criminal. He should be in jail. He was. It was like all over social media the last couple of weeks, and because was of he that, the one that walked into yeah. someone's house. Yeah. Walked into someone's I saw house. That. I, I saw you tweet that. Yeah. Yeah. Like, stole someone's yeah. door. Awesome. Next thing, he's on like Piers Morgan, giving the getting the platform that he wanted, and it kind of other people watching that. They're watching such negativity instead of you know watching good things that it almost makes yeah. copycats and then it creates it and it manifests more of the bad stuff. So it's like, you know, why can't we be seeing? Yeah, it is. It is. Social media really is, and there's like such a, a social contagion in all of it that if maybe we saw people being heroes and being invited onto Piers Morgan because they'd done something amazing, you know what I mean? That would that would just check, make a shift into something more positive, and that and that's the problem we've we've got. We keep on being bombarded with a lot of negativity because that helps us, that helps manifest more rather than you know. Raising everyone's positivity. Everyone's positivity. Yeah, definitely. It is. I, I saw that clip actually. I saw the guy's face with Piers, and then you've connected the dots because I saw your retweet. I was like, it's the same guy. Yeah, why would you do that? You know, and what but they but it does, they kept people in such a low vibration that they gobble that stuff up. Yeah. You know, yeah. Like horror films and shit. It's like I'm just not bothered about those. But then you find out that's the sort of stuff they've actually been doing there to tell you, you know. There's yeah, a, but there's yeah, so much yeah, more inspiring yeah. films and material out there. And I find there's a lot of, I'm watching films now and I kind of just trust the universe. It's like, all right, I'll work all day, I'll be out, go on the beach. And then if I sit down, I'll, there's a film, okay, I'll watch it. And then usually lots of codes. It's like, there's a message in there and it's maybe made 10 years ago, but it's really relevant to right yeah, now. Yeah. So I think, yeah, yeah. I think they're pinpointing. It's like, just watch this, pick up that message. Okay, all right, I got that, I got that, you know. But yeah, no, yeah. We're always manifesting. Why not make something great? Because yeah. it takes as much effort, I think. Definitely. Of, it definitely does. Definitely. definitely. Yeah, it's mental. Well, it's been amazing to have you on the show, Lilani. Thank you. 
Yeah, um, thank you. Thanks for having me. I'd love to do it again sometime. When, when, uh, where can people find you? Where's the best place that they can find you? So um, I'm on Instagram oh, under a short oh, version of my name. You can't put in full, my full name. <laughs> so it's okay. Lani Dowd on Instagram, like the heart, last half of my first name, the second half, first half of my second name, Lani Dowd. Um, or I'm on Twitter, Leilani Dowding on Twitter. Um, and I got a YouTube um, Leilani Small Holding where I'm doing stupid stuff around my little, around my little small farm, I'm trying to grow farm, stuff. To grow stuff. Yeah. I'm not always great. Not great. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're, the thing is, you're, you're, you're I, I mean, I saw it from, from outside, but now I've had the chance to sit down and, and share this conversation with you. It's like, she's great. She's just like, just, just you're authentic. You just speak how you feel, which is what people... That's what we need. We need realism in the world now, you know. I know, and so it's time now to stop being scared to speak up because, you know, and I think it takes a few people to speak up at the start because then you can, like, kind of say, look, this person is, that person is. And then you meet, so you like-minded people and you become stronger. If everyone's waiting for someone else to speak up, you know, you don't know who you're you kind of... Yeah, you're waiting a long time. You don't know who your like-minded people are. You're there going, oh, you know... Yeah. So yeah. I think yeah, it's important. Yeah, it's important. 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 Did you have that moment when you started speaking out that you suddenly found your peer group of like-minded that would kind of offer? Oh, that absolutely! It was amazing. I, I was on Instagram. Um, I think I saw Sean Ward speak up and Leanne Brown. Mm -hmm. um speak up les um, les, um uh, uh, where's brown's uh, ex-wife Brown, she's, ex she's a um, a, um the england um, player oh, where's man united yeah, yeah. man yeah. united okay. he, i saw his wife saw speak his up wife and i thought i'm gonna say it like you know, say, like, you know why am i why am i, why am I you know keeping quiet and it was maybe a couple of weeks in so i saw i remember seeing those two first i thought right i'm gonna back them up and my first thing was to back them up when i saw people talking rubbish under in their comments on my instagram and actually as soon as i did everyone's you know people found me they started talking to each other i saw there were you know there were sometimes some heated debates going on in the comments a lot of the people that didn't like what i was saying unfollowed me that's fine or they got blocked um, and then I had a load of people that basically it became like a community of like-minded people so I wasn't really active on Twitter but then I guess Instagram hated what I was saying because they took my account down and I've never been able to get it back they properly took it back and um, took it down um, how many did you have on the I had about 67,000 at the time um, yeah, that's no joke that and yeah and it was really it was really really disappointing um and i'm setting and i'm sure if there was a kind of twitter files thing for instagram my name would have been on there like i'm proper blacklist I blacklisted i tried to set other accounts up they kept coming down so i can't use my real name on instagram um but it was it was amazing because i didn't even have to speak a lot of the time i'd see people chatting and making friends yeah. in the comments or then i'd be like oh i'm gonna be at the protest and then i'd see these people at the protest and it would just be it was it was really great um and i think that's you know that's one of the one things i am grateful for i made a lot of amazing warrior friends so that's it warrior yeah warrior friends. <laughs> I, had a, I had a similar thing i so the numbers kind of descended upon me the first couple of weeks of lockdown it was like a kind of conscious download looking into Diana, Q, Trump, the Kennedys. And I felt for two weeks I should do a video. Sorry, two months I should do a video. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm learning the numbers. I'm, I'm listening to Trump talking. He's misspeaking. I'm working out what he's saying. His tweets are misspeaking, misspelling. I'm getting all these numbers and insights. And then I was like, I should do a video. And I finally did one in the like, latter part of May 2020. And I put the video out. And then within about two or three days, I connected with like minded people i met jack kid and others and and uh, and then i got my little kind of group and then it kind of grew from there you know and then i started doing my channel more but yeah yeah it's amazing yeah, so yeah. If, people, if people feel a similar thing if they feel like fuck i'll lose my friends i'll you know what the universe will have you about if you're a warrior yeah. if you have a pure yeah. heart you will, will be protected and you'll find like-minded people and, and uh, uh, speaking from personal experience it's actually great doing the stuff we're doing yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So, well, God bless you, Lilani. Thank, thank you. you. Thank Thanks you. For having me on. Thank you. And uh, go and go and follow her on all of her all of the stuff that she can actually do on social media, <laughs> <laughs> all the accounts that she's got. So, and um, yeah, watch the space. We'll speak again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless. Take care. Bye. Thank you.